This 2018 TiVo Tornado offers a lot of build volume for not that much money. In this review, you'll find out what's to love and what's to watch out for. This is a TiVo Tornado. It's got a massive 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume. And at the moment it's on sale for around $340 US from AliExpress. It's pretty much the first of the CR10 clones that came out. And instead of just being a really, really cheap clone, it tried to make some improvements. It's got things like a Titan extruder, and it also has things like an AC powered bed. So it heats up really, really fast, especially compared to the original CR10. I've been printing heaps with this thing, so I reckon I'm well placed to give my review. But first, let's rewind back to when I put it all together and did my first prints. Here it is, ready for some unboxing and first prints. Let's open the box. Hopefully there's instructions and everything I need inside. I'm going in completely blind. As far as I know, this is a really easy to put together printer. So let's find out. So here it is, there's only two main components. It reminds me very much of when I put together my Cocoon Create Touch, which I got from Audi, but of course is a clone of a one how duplicator i3. So let's look what we got here. We've got our two main components on the bed. I like to note that there is a test print it's starting to peel off, but you know, it's come from the other side of the world. I can forgive that. We have a set of looks like screws and nuts for bed leveling. We've got an instruction manual and card, USB cable, scraper, SD card, cable size, power cord with an actual Australian plug. Appreciate that TiVo. Mini tool sets, some sort of anodized metal bracket, I assume for holding this to this. A second one of those, and that's it. So I'm gonna open the instructions and see what we've got inside. Seems pretty straightforward. I'm gonna get these two together. So the build has gone perfectly well so far. I've been going for about 20 minutes. The main thing is together, and the reason I've stopped is to discuss this build surface more. Now, all of the reviews I've seen from these for a couple of years ago had a fake build tech like surface, and it apparently was very hard to get prints off. This one seems to be almost like a tempered glass. So if I peel off this one, it comes quite easily. There's more static electricity than anything else holding it in place. It's got a, quite a shiny surface but it's translucent. Let's see if I can remove it and hold it up to the light. So the thing about this printer compared to the CR10, the CR10, the original ones at least were 12 volts and the bed heating was meant to be really, really slow. These use mains power. So I have 220 volts going into this, should heat extremely fast. Bit of a mystery what this material is. When I hold it to the light, I can see through it and it's got a slight red tinge. On the underside, it's got these little dimples. The top is perfectly smooth and polished. So some first impressions, the assembly was very straightforward. Everything was labeled, the instructions made sense. And we do have some spares left over. So a spare for Mr. spare nozzle. My only complaints are all of the cables here. There's nothing in the instructions about the preferred cable management. I have a personal preference for an all-in-one machine. I don't really like this box on the side, but that's the way this one comes. I'll have to print some sort of solution. The heated bed, for instance, it's extremely important to get that right because we don't want mains wiring to fray and be damaged and potentially electrocute ourselves. So it would have been nice to have something more in the manual about securing these wires and placement for that. Can I just say how much I love this new color scheme? All the other ones I've seen with these were black, but then they had green and then a red base. Personally, I found that clashed a bit, but this black and gold, really nice. Really happy with that. Might turn on the machine for the first time, and get everything leveled and start a test print. This is one thing I don't like, the nuts aren't held firmly from the top. So it's just spinning as I try and change the thumb wheel and the Allen key doesn't quite fit here. That's definitely a bit of a design flaw. Hopefully I haven't missed something, but it seems like having a lock nut on the underside of that to clamp it against the build surface, that would fix that problem. So you can just turn this freely. Bed is leveled as much as I'm willing to do now. I normally prefer to do it live when the first print happens. So let's do that now. There's no spool holder, so I'm just gonna hang this off the top. Got a little X3D sample filament. You get those with every order when you order from them. We're gonna print the TiVo test file from the SD card. Now this extruder is very nice to use. It's got this really big oversized lever. 
and it's also got this dial here so you can manually extrude or retract the filament without having to shove it and risk snapping it. Let's start this print. Well, here we are the next day and I've done some printing. It did take me three goes to get that Tebow test print out. You can see that the first couple peeled off as I went. And to fix that, I eventually got a good one by twisting the bed and just moving it that little bit higher to the nozzle. I did run out of my sample filament partway through that, which explains the gappiness in the middle here, but that's not the printer's fault. And it did print quite well and it peeled off nicely after everything cooled down. I've got some bonus points for my solution for mounting the spool holder. I was pretty happy with that. Next, I turned my attention to the pre-sliced G-code for the spool holder, and it printed a bit, didn't print too well. I noticed as it was printing, there was a lot of clicking coming from the extruder, and I remembered in the instructions that you were meant to tighten that if it wasn't extruding quite as well as it should have been. So there are some missed layers here, and it's extremely brittle where they are. So that's pretty much toast. But I did reprint it after tightening up the extruder spring, and this one is plenty strong a lot of stringing and a little bit of inconsistency on some of the Z layers, but overall not too bad. But I think we're kind of off and rolling, so I might print as much as I can over the next little bit, and then I'll get back to you with my review. My filament of choice is PLA, so therefore I did most of my prints on this machine with PLA also. My first print that I did after the unboxing and initial prints was a new spool holder, and it turned out pretty good. There are a couple of marks on the Z where it seemed like something wasn't quite settled yet. And this was confirmed with my next test prints, which were these mini Pikachus. The first one that I did once again had some minor banding on the Z axis down below, but then looked beautiful afterwards. I repeated the exact same G code and the next one came out flawlessly. What a beautiful print and it was so much more improved from my own simplified 3D profile rather than whatever they used for the one on the SD card. Next up, I did my own two-part maker coin. This is a great test of accuracy, and I'm pleased to say that the two pieces slotted together pretty much perfectly. Apart from the Prusa Mark III behind me, this is probably the best version I've ever had of this so far. This here is probably my favorite print I've done on this printer, and one of my favorite of all time. It's a Venus de Milo statue, and I did it in X3D PLA marble, and I did it at 0.15 layer height, and the quality is just outstanding. The flex in the filament hide the layer lines, which are barely there to begin with, apart from a couple of bits where it's hung down on the chin and underarm because I didn't put any support in, this thing looks almost flawless. This is one of the nicest ready prints I've ever done in my life. Next up, I did this chain mail, and as you can see, it worked out pretty good, but it wasn't that easy to get it like this. As this is a Bowden extruder, just like with the Ender 3, if you're not careful, upping your retraction means the filament will slowly reverse out and the print will fail. So I had to turn it way down, which left a lot of little bits of stringing, but you do the usual trick to loosen them up, and now it's got a pretty nice flow. One of the reasons I was excited about reviewing this printer is because the build volume is so large. So I thought, you know what? Time to print some big things. And next, I did this vase. It was on the main page of Thingiverse at the time. Just the way that it catches the light is absolutely stunning. It was done in vase mode. I think it took around six hours. And they say it's not meant to be watertight, so you can see some holes in here. That's not the printer's fault. That is the design's fault. But wow, what a beautiful thing. As big as this is, it's nowhere near filling up the entire build volume, so you could make things even bigger than this. Next, I turn my attention to a custom project that I've been working on for a while. These parts are carbon fiber, but these two end pieces are quite large and they'd have a little bit of trouble fitting on some of my other printers. So this printer actually did a really good job of those, very consistent layers. As you can see, the carbon fiber tube fits perfectly in the end, very accurate mechanically. And then there's these two end bits where I was developing the design to make everything clip together. Only trouble was when you got a printer this big, things take a long, long time to print. So I thought, you know what? Time to try a bigger nozzle. I bet too many people haven't seen a Benchy that looks quite like this. This was printed with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle at 0.5 millimeter layer height. And it's a pretty cool thing. It only took just over 20 minutes. That's by far the fastest Benchy I've ever printed. That gave me the confidence once I dialed in the settings to have a go at this part here. Now this is a pretty strong solid part and normally you'd expect something like this to take hours and hours and hours to print. The previous version took about 14 hours. Unfortunately, I ran out of filament. This one completed in just over four hours. How amazing is that? Eventually, I'll be converting this printer to a 0.8mm nozzle permanently, and I'll cover all of that in an upcoming video.
One other big thing that I did was when I made my video on how I made my RGB logo box and the plastic backing was done on this printer. I had to wait a long time to have a printer that big to be able to print the full 300 by 300 for both the base and the cover. If you want more details on how I did that, then please check out that video. So far, all of these PLA prints had stuck beautifully to this bed. When it was hot, they were really on there firmly, but as soon as it cooled down, I could just lift them off without really doing anything. So I thought I would try out some ABS. I printed with my Solidoodle 2 on glass for years and years and years with ABS, and although not perfect, it worked pretty well. Unfortunately, on this one, I had quite a lot of trouble getting ABS prints to stick. I started by doing this cube, it took me about six goes to get this one to work, and hairspray was the only thing that could get it to stick. On the bare glass, I couldn't get anything to happen at all. You can see on the edges that it's curled up a little bit, and then when it gets to the top, the quality is actually quite good. I pushed a little further and I dig this flexi dinosaur, Stegosaurus, and it came a little bit loose at the end and ruined one side, but apart from that, it printed not too bad. This was printed with Zortrax ABS, and it's a little bit tricky to print with this. It needs really high temperatures, so maybe that would explain part of it. I then turned my attention to PETG and I had a lot of trouble getting this Jigglypuff to actually print out nicely. And I read on the internet that a lot of people have trouble getting PETG to separate from glass. In fact, it pulls out chunks and ruins the print surface. I had the opposite trouble and I did a little bit of poking around and I found out that this is in fact glass ceramic. It's more of a composite like they use on those cooktops where it's completely flat and the heat comes from underneath. So the properties are a little bit different to the normal tempered glass. I went through heaps and heaps of failed prints where they would fall off halfway through. In the end, the only way I could get it to work was to put down a little bit of masking tape and then this one came out quite nicely. So as long as you're willing to put down another surface temporarily, you're gonna be able to print PETG, no problem at all. The last filament I tried was some TPU. I turned up the temperature, I turned off the heated bed, I turned down the speeds a great deal and more and more, but I still could not get a completed print. This Titan extruder has a little opening that when you feed through the filament, stops it from accidentally jamming like it can on lots of other Bowden style extruders. But on this one, it's just a little bit of wiggle room and that unfortunately caused it to jam pretty much in the same place every time. Didn't matter how slow I did it or how much I turned up the temperature, it would always happen and I couldn't get a print to come out of it. The glass bed, however, was beautiful. It held it on nicely and then I could peel it off in a very satisfying way afterwards. So I've gone through a few kilos of filament. I feel well placed to have my pros and cons in summary for this. Firstly, the positives. I love the looks of this thing. It's a really classy looking printer. I didn't really like the old design that much with the bright green and the graphics all over the box. This one with its subtle gold and black color scheme and the nice glossy ceramic glass bed, it just looks beautiful. You might think, well, that's not actually that important for a 3D printer. Well, let me tell you something. Mrs. Teaching Tech said this was the nicest looking 3D printer I had. Next pro is the build volume, 300 by 300 by 400. For this price, there's not really much that's gonna touch it. There's a bunch of projects like my RGB logo box that you simply can't do on any other printer. And I intend to do some follow-up videos on this printer showing printing really, really big things. I have to commend the componentry on this printer. Everything is really well put together. Everything fits nicely. I didn't need to adjust anything out of the box. Overall, I've been really happy with the quality that this thing provides. Also of note is the low noise. When everything is up and running, it's probably about average for 3D printers, but most of the time the fan in the control box is not on, and that's a large bonus. Quite often you can have it sitting there idle in the room, and you won't be able to hear it at all. I did fit stepper motor dampers to the X and Y on this, and with that small amount of investment, it's actually quite quiet when it's printing as well. I highly recommend it, links in the description below. The Titan Extruder for the most part is really nice to use. It's got a nice bit where you can squeeze it to manually push the filament in and out. It's got the adjustment bolt so you can get the right amount of tension you want on your filament. And the best thing is this wheel hanging out the back. As you feed it in by hand and then screw it through with the wheel, it's really nice to use and it's much nicer than having to push it through by hand the entire way and risk something buckling and then snapping off. This heated bed is definitely a star. It heats up super, super quick. We're talking from room temperature to 100 degrees in just a couple of minutes. If you're going to only 60 degrees for PLA, it's over in a blink of an eye. It's almost as fast as the nozzle to heat up. It does work beautifully for PLA. It had complete confidence that it was gonna stick every time and remove after it had cooled down, never worried me once, and it always delivered. Now, another thing that's really good about this printer that you can't necessarily see is in here, and that's the main board. It's got an MKS Gen L, and that importantly has a 2560 mega. So as we see on the first Creality CR10s and the Ender 3, which have the smaller 1284P chip, 
You're not going to have any trouble adding things to this printer and upgrading that require firmware changes and running out of room on that chip and having to compromise. You're going to have no problems like that here. On to the negatives and there's only two main ones and a couple of small ones. The first one is the bed leveling screws. As I discovered when I was leveling it, as you turn the bottom, the top turns as well. So you need to get an Allen key most of the time. Also, these little attachments on the bottom are quite small. So I almost found it painful sometimes to kind of reach underneath and they dug into my finger quite a bit. Now my number one gripe by far with this printer is the cable management. Compared to a CR10, it's got these cheap plastic conduit bits and I don't think they're really long enough. If you print the spool holder that you meant to off the SD card, you'll find that it sits it right in the middle of these cables and everything gets tangled. It might be fine when you're printing low things, but the first time you print something tall, all of a sudden things are tangling and getting in the way. Probably the most concerning issue is the lack of strain relief for the mains voltage wiring coming into the heated bed. I found a couple of times that that kinked and jammed at the back of the printer, stopping it from homing the Y axis. There's a lot of mods on Thingiverse that will allow you to fix this problem. It's gonna be one of the first things I print now that my review period is over, as I start modifying the machine. I guess I gotta save money somewhere compared to a CR10, and there's two areas where they do that. First is the SD card. It's only 512 megs, and it actually gave up the ghost halfway through this review period for me, which is a little bit disappointing. The other is the spool holder, or should I say, lack thereof. You print one out as you go at the start, not the end of the world, but it'd be nice to have one right from the get-go. Last thing that's perhaps not ideal is the bed for ABS and PETG. ABS is always gonna be difficult doing things of this size in an open frame printer, but PETG is a lot more popular because it doesn't suffer from the warping, but you have to be prepared to put down some tape or at least hairspray or something like that to help it stick. Well, that's it. Overall, I really, really enjoyed this printer. It looks nice and I can see so much potential with it. No, it's not perfect, but for the price, I think the things that I'm unhappy with are things that can be fixed fairly easily and it's a nice basis for building a really nice printer. What am I gonna do to it? Well, I'm gonna be adding some auto bed leveling and I really have a personal dislike of these separate control boxes. So my big plan is to try and move everything from here into the space underneath here and make it a really nice, neat, all-in-one unit. That'll tidy up all of this cabling that I also don't like and the spool holder that comes with it will then work perfectly. The other thing that I'll be doing, as I mentioned, is converting it to be a 0.8 millimeter nozzle so I can print really big things quite fast and I think that's the best way to use a printer like this. Not to say that you couldn't use it as is with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle that comes with it. It's quite capable in that respect, but I have other printers and I'm all about specificity. So this one is gonna be making big things. Just a quick note, this is the updated model with the gold and black. If you go to most websites, it still has pictures of the old one with the red and green and black. Apparently any new ones coming out now will be this updated one, but probably best to use the link in the description in the meantime to make sure you get the newest one. And that's from the AliExpress store from TiVo directly. That's gonna wrap it up for this one. I'm really excited about what the future holds for this enormous handsome printer. And I look forward to showing you all the mods that I do. Until then, thanks so much for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.